Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. Um, there are four of us present tonight. Mr. Sarzinski will not be here. So first up for general information is, well, the only one, Lynn Gray. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much for the last minute add to the agenda. Um, just a few weeks ago, um, the members of Planet Fitness um, in Hampshire Mall presented some facade paint colors um, on behalf of Planet Fitness. Unfortunately, um, none of the owners from Planet Fitness were able to be on, so I'll be presenting on their behalf. Um, we presented some color schemes and it was a recommendation of the planning board to revisit um, the color palette to match more of the mall's earth tones. Um, so we are presenting a couple of versions, um, the preferred version being the lighter gray version, um, which is consistent with the gray color schemes that are on the existing storefronts for PetSmart and Target that were all recently approved. Um, so with your permission, um, they would like to repaint the, the entryway for their entrance and those improvements to the existing colors are really to make Planet Fitness their entryway a little bit more pleasing to members visiting um, and give their exterior entrance more identifiable as an entrance into the facility as they are on the back side of the property and they're not visible to the Route 9 traffic um, and to replace the deteriorating paint that's um, currently around their, their entrance. So Lynn, do you have, are you able to share your screen or do you need me to put up those, uh, what you send around? Let me see if I can do that. Here we go. I used to be Zoom savvy and then we started. There we go. So I'm sharing my screen the first can you see this? Yes. Okay. There we go. This is the lighter gray version, and this is the preferred version. I don't know if you want to see um, an alternate, which is a darker gray, um, but this is the version that the tenant would like us to move forward with, if it's possible. And I have also, um, I shared some photos of what the paint colors were that were approved for Target. And it's well within that, that scheme, this classic gray. Um, some of the accent colors that they had in here, you can see sort of, oops, sorry, match up to the, to the two tones that are in here now. And then, PetSmart, it's not a great photo, but it's a photo that can show you that theirs is sort of a lighter gray. Um, it's not exactly that, that cream color that exists today. Um, it helps make their entrance a little bit more pronounced as well. So this is what's there. So you're These calling that color, excuse me, you're calling the color March Wind? <laughs> That's the color that our, our tenant coordination department put together. Um, but that, I guess that's the specific name of that color. So, so that's a Sherwin Williams, Sir Sherwin Williams color. That would be my guess, yes, with the SW there, yep. Okay, I, I, I'm good with that shade. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. I think that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Mr. Mr. Do I want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve um, March Wind and Peppercorn. <laughs> okay. Thank you. They get very fancy with their names. Um, the other thing uh, while we have you is the Planet Fitness opened back in. I just uh, take, oh. get a second for that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. You have a second? Second. Okay. Second. Any other comments? If not, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0 with one absent. Okay, could proceed. Um, the way. other thing that Planet Fitness had asked me to bring up is the issue of their directional signage. 
back in 2017, when they first opened, um, they did not install at that time um, directional signage, which at the time, again, we interpreted the bylaws to um, assume that they were acceptable to install a directional on one of the entryways onto the ring road. Um, it was brought to our attention uh, following the pandemic. They, they suffered from a decline in, in memberships. There's a perception issue within the town that gyms have been unsafe to go to. And I think that they um, are really struggling as far as not having that, pre that presence on Route 9. And currently we're limited with the existing pylon signage to add any more square footage. Um, so they opted to install a directional. Um, they ended up installing two directionals. Um, and I have the dimensions um, for, for what signs they did install, but it's come to our attention that they are not permitted under the current bylaws that only one directional would be permitted. Um, and so we were hoping to have a discussion on what the next steps might be to have a, a the first and the second um, approved. And I can pull up what they did. This is a picture of what exists and the dimensions of what they did. And so currently they have one on the, um, I can't think if it's the northern or southernmost uh, point on South Maple, and then one that is on the Route 9 side near where Target is. Comments on the board? Uh, I'd certainly, you know, as a directional sign, the one on South Maple Street would be acceptable. But uh, now if, if we just extrapolate this forward and have everyone on Route 9, everybody in the mall have a little sign like that, that would not be acceptable. So I would not encourage another sign on Route 9 because the pylon is available to them if they can negotiate, or if Pyramid can negotiate, to, because that one pylon is taking up for the cinemas totally. So... But nevertheless, uh, I would not approve the one on Route 9 uh, just because everybody else would ask for one and it, it, it would not be appropriate according to our signing bylaws. Yeah, I, don't, I don't disagree with that comment. I mean, the one on North South Maple, I think over by the uh, bike, that's the one by the bike path, uh, correct? That's right, yep. Yeah, that, that, that size and that location is fine. Okay. With, with that sign, you get you quickly get to a spot where you can see the actual entrance. The one on Route Nine is uh, diagonally across the mall from where they actually are. So uh, yeah, I think that's just a little one too far. Okay. Okay. Is that already up? Is that what yeah? They 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 installed them um, a couple of months ago. without approval they did so we are going to um ask them to have the route nine sign removed what do we want to put that in a motion bill um probably should huh yeah so i'll make a motion to require the removal of the planet fitness directional sign uh, at the route nine entrance and the one on and one on South Maple is okay, right? To uh, and to allow the one on South Maple. Okay. And I second. Will... Is that a second, Mark? Yes. Okay. Motion yes. a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four zero with one absent. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got a few minutes before Ken, so we've got some bills to pay.
The first one is a invoice to the Daily Hampshire Gazette for the ideal legal notice in the Gazette for their TDR. The total is $393.76. Motion I'll make a pay. motion to approve. We have a second. Second. We have a second. Vote. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 401. Next one is for the zoning notice in the Gazette for the uh, zone men that we're having tonight. And that invoice is for $226.41. That may go up because that was only for one notice. The Gazette made a mistake. Um, they published it. They didn't publish it like it was requested, but they did publish it properly. But this was only for one notice. I don't know if they're going to charge it for the second notice or what they're going to do with that one. So in the meantime, we only have one invoice for the 226.41. Motion, um, motion to pay. Do have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 401. And the last one is for payroll for the last, I guess to be the second quarter of the year, of the of the fiscal year, um, for $575. Motion to pay. Who is that from? That's for us, for our, for our stipend. Oh, well, I would agree with that. I'll second that. Then. <laughs> I like your enthusiasm, our big pay, right? Just to comment to Mark, that is not for each individual. That's the yeah, total that's amount. The total. Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> anyway. I, tell, I tell people I, I pay $80 a year to be on the planning board because I have to have a separate phone and it costs $480 <laughs> a year. So if I get 400 I'm paying eighty dollars to be here. So, oh, what a all, in favor, all in favor of the payroll? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four zero one. I will get those out to the treasurer. <laughs> all right. Um, well, it's just about time. So, uh, just a couple you of things. Uh, uh, I, we should do a motion to continue ideal. Oh. Um, they were, yes. they, we had had them on a standby to come in, so um, I'll mo make a motion to continue to uh, was it November five, November five. Okay, we have a second. Second. In November five isn't that a Friday? Oh, I'm sorry. November second, you mean, Bill? November second, yes. Okay. Right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 401. And um, Tom Reedy had sent an email, but he wanted to be sure that we had the uh, application. I had actually missed it when it came in, but I forwarded it to you, Jim, this afternoon. Yep, I got it. I printed it. I'm going to put the sign and put the, put the uh, amount on and email it back to Tom. I'll get that tonight. Okay. And there was one other, it was going to be one of the walk-in pieces. Um, I did receive an email from Nicole Burkume um, that she uh, wanted to come in and talk about renaming Crystal Lane to Crystal Heights oh. so that it would be phonetically distinct from Bristol Lane. Oh, that uh, cool. I did speak with the police chief this afternoon uh, he thinks that's a uh, that's fine, and thanks the Burkum family for their cooperation. Uh, but I think um, we have to actually wait for a for an ask before we can vote on that. So um, we can, um, if if Nicole joins us later on, we can take it up at that point. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Mr. Ken, good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> so I think where we left off at the last meeting was, I think we were stuck on um, the particular formula that was given, that we worked through 
Um, and I'm just going to quickly open that. Um, let's see. Can yeah, you sent uh, you sent the Barnstable and the Provincetown links. Can you? Uh, I mean, I, I had very little time to kind of skip sure. through them, and what I didn't get was why was Barnstable's fee determined to be a tax and not a fee was i'm not sure what i missed in that i was still trying to navigate that too i was looking okay some of the case study um with regards to that the they have adopted that bylaw as has provincetown and the language is similar um but that example um which i was going to discuss after was specific to the discussion that we had when bill brought up the subdivision regulations and maybe addressing a component of mandatory provision for payment um, when you're developing a subdivision. Um, this was handled within the bylaw. I think, as I mentioned in my email to the board, there was, um, I wasn't able to find anything in the subdivision that was specific to the applying of a fee a fee, maybe a tax, if if that if that exists. Um, okay, well, we can address this later okay. if I'm if I'm if I'm getting you out of out of order. Yeah, yeah. I mean, either way, it, it, I think it's 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 an important conversation, especially since it was brought up at the last meeting. But I think with regards to where the board may be um, for this particular project, where we're trying to create a set of regulations based on um, based on um, a, an affordability gap um, calculation, which is the difference between the median sales price of a single family home in Hadley and the maximum affordable sales price of a single family residential unit for a Hadley household of four, earning 80% of the area median income. Um, so it it is a, a calculation where you're subtracting and that is the number that would be the per unit cost for a pilot uh, for a payment in lieu of. Um, I don't know, um, you know where we were with regard to this conversation and how much further um, we needed to go with uh, arriving at a, at, a, at a final stop. Um, but I, 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 I leave it to the board to maybe you know continue to to engage to figure out where we need to go from here and and what clarifications we may need um, either in this or you know a future document um, or you know do we want to revisit the former calculation I'm not quite sure. Well, Kim, the only thing I would hope we would do in the discussion is to leave us some flexibility. Okay. Because the. The, the housing market is just crazy. I mean, there was an editorial in a paper that California, uh, if in order to house more of their homeless, are putting up uh, eight by eight sheds, like something you would put in your backyard to store your lawnmower, which ordinarily would cost probably a, close to $1,500, is something costing, after all the government regulations, is costing something like 13,000. So we have to have some flexibility because, you know, the prevailing wage law, if they built, if the developer builds the house, is the prevailing wage law going to be, is the developer going to be forced to charge the prevailing wages or? There, there would be a requirement based on the fact that it is, it is, yeah, all of those types of calculations are handled and approved by the Department of Housing and Community Development when you're include when you're adding to your inventory of subsidized housing. Um, so I'm sure that whoever is going to be navigating the administrative process, whether it's someone on staff that would be you know forwarding those documents, they would have to ensure that that type of work was being done. Well, it, um, it's like we're, we're chasing our tail. I mean, we're trying to make it affordable, but be, because of the rules and regulations promulgated by the state, it's it's going to be expensive, and it's not going to be quite the same looking as the 
as they're supposed to be to the neighboring houses. But I, I digress. Uh, I think we have to, we're, we're in a hole. We, are, we should probably stop digging and make a decision. Uh, I so think looking I think, for wiser souls to prevail here. <laughs> well, I, I think you, this one is, this particular formula that maybe we arrived at is based on, you know, data that will go to the assessors that quantifies the average, the median cost, uh, mean price of um, single family residential units that are under four or more bedrooms. Um, and then a calculation of a housing unit, which is available to 80% of the median area income for a family of four. Um, and that, that is the, the difference of those two would, would arrive at the calculated cost per unit. I think 2C, which is what uh, was added, was specific to that there should be no per unit fee of less than $60,000. And I think that might have amounted to where you were at when you were working with the developer on the senior housing. Um, so if the flexibility is that the planning board is you know, going to, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess the, the question is, where is the flexibility? Is the flexibility on whether or not the, the calculations that are identified here that would have to be done um, if you don't necessarily agree with them? Or is it, where, where, where are you seeking the flexibility, I guess, is the question. Well, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the question. I mean, we, we've, we wanna put something in there and, and maybe the flexibility is the alternate formula that we talked about originally. Cost of the land, cost of the house and a cost of the mortgage. If they can prove that it's dramatically less than this, um, then what that that formula in A, 2A is, um, you know, that might be the, for the time being, that may be the flexibility portion. Uh, I'm a... Uh... Um, yeah, that I think we can add in something. Um, I, I would like to actually see what that number comes out to. So um, I will reach out to Dan Zadonik in the assessor's office and see if they even keep records that way. Uh, I imagine they do. So we're looking for up to three bedroom houses. Uh, the average sale price of a three bedroom, of an up to a three bedroom house for the past 12 to 24 months. Yep. And honestly, that might be another place where we have some flexibility because if we know that there's been a spike in the last year, we can average it over four years or- um, right. I mean, and-, and Recently, sense. over the past probably six to 12 months, there has been a probably a spike in prices, both in the construction price and the selling price. But let me think, a year, a little over a year ago, when I was looking to put my addition on, I was being told that the price, to price my addition between $150 and $200 a square foot. So, and that's not far from where the addition came out if I had not been doing so much, my, so much work myself. So Ken, if I can find a number for 2A, mm -hmm. can you find a number for 2B? Yeah. I, yeah, I think um, if we can get an example um, if yeah, Bill, if you have like, if the assessor is able to provide that number, I think we can deduce based on the formula and, um, you know, seek out 
the other community and how they approach this. Um, you know, I think that there is this conversation that we're having in housing across the state with regards to inclusionary zoning and this payment in lieu of. Um, so it, it, I think it's it's a fascinating time that we're we're currently discussing this at the moment. So, um, but I think that I'll be able to come up with that number and we can figure out how close it may be to the um, 60,000. Um, I think if, if the board wants to, you know, if the board wants to look at, let's see if I can find that. Uh, I like the idea that, that, you know, if we were in a spike and we felt that was gonna be an undue burden on the developer, that we could have the purview to expand the average period from two years to four years, um, as long as it's not deemed uh, arbitrary and capricious. Yeah. What we need to do also in the case of the averaging of the prices, like throw out the high and the low. Because you may find. Yeah. Would you, would you feel that that needed to be addressed when we're I, I don't think we need. I don't think we need to put that in writing so much as it, as understand. I don't want to put that much detail into this thing. It right. Like crazy. We're putting in that kind of detail. Yeah. You know. Also, take a look at it. I mean, you may, you may find out that the high and the low on, on certain times there may not be a big difference. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be a big deal to put to include them. Other times you may find that you know one or two homes is way out of whack. So yeah, where, where it's going to get tricky is the ones that uh, the interfamily transfer with a retained life estate where it's a you know, hundred dollars or a dollar. Um, yeah, we really, um, those would be good to, to throw out. Yeah, I think we have to throw those out, but I, I wish, I, I don't know, and maybe I have to talk to Dan about this, there's a way to capture the value of the property, the changed hands. Well, and, and, you may, and, it, may, and it may be the assessed value in some of those cases too, Bill. Yeah. There, there seems to be this word within this, this particular regulation, qualified. I don't know if and I'm yeah. not sure if that means, you know, that transaction um i can determine if that's the case um but that makes sense yeah would a qualified market sales knock out that family trust or whatever yeah, yeah that's where we got to take a look and, and and look at that word uh but that that does give us some flexibility but i would like to maybe pin give it a little more, uh, put some criteria in there. Um, you know, what we, uh, the, um, the, other, uh, the other expression we use is an arm's length sale, implying a willing buyer and a willing seller. So. Um, oh, okay. Is that a legal term, Bill? Uh, more or less. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say it was. It, it's a legal, legal phrase within the with the generally understood meaning. So okay. um, it's you won't find it in a statute necessarily, but uh, and then I have to brush up on my mean, median, and mode. <laughs> <laughs> or me, mean and median can be drastically different in mm -hmm. values. And the average. Just yeah. say the average. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I did have a little feeling where we said average and then in parentheses mean was kind of saying, and we're going with apples, yeah. oranges in parentheses. You know. I might even take out the word mean and just leave the word average in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because Everybody. You start. You start when you start talking to a statistician, man. They, 
<laughs> that, that's I mean, that's all you need at a public hearing, right? Yeah, yes. right. Because why, isn't, why isn't, the, statistics? isn't the mean, doesn't that basically, you take the high and the low and it's the middle of those, it takes all the other ones out. Isn't that what, I think that's what the mean is. Whereas the average weights where all of the aggregate numbers are, it takes those into account, if, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. That's what I mean. Ken. What's the I mean, oh, most frequently mark is that occurring number? You no, know, mean and median. Well, forever. You know, Ken, what I would like to do is to have uh, authorize you to contact uh, Chief Justice Roberts, uh, who had a <laughs> ruling on Obamacare regarding is this a fee or is it a tax? <laughs> <laughs> and if if Mike were here, he would suggest that you contact the Supreme Judicial Court of Columbia. That's right. Yeah. You know, exactly. When I was saying this, I was going to preface it in lieu of Mike not being here. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that he's in Italy and Europe, he can he can come back with the with the way they have zoning in Europe. And if you've got a farm. It's a farm. You cannot convert it to building lots without approval of the state, pretty much. Jim, were you on board uh, when we had the, uh, the group from England come yes. to a planning board meeting? Yes. Talking about the difference in zoning. Yes. Yeah, that, that was interesting. For example, in, in the Valley here, certainly Northampton would be the Commerce Center of, of the county. And of course, we would be the agricultural place that we couldn't convert anything to housing and uh, so on and so forth. But they take a wider scope or wider view of their zoning than we do town by town. Yeah, that's why when you go to a lot of places in Europe, I mean, we're off the subject a little bit, but you'll see vast wide open spaces and little villages. The little villages where all the people are concentrated and you cannot go out into the country and put a house up there, even if you own the land. That's strictly for farming. Mm. And that's protected. That's nice. They're not blessed with a lot of land. That's why they want to preserve the farming land as much as they can. Not like out in Illinois. Where... <laughs> anyway, back to the topic at hand. Okay, yes. So, yes. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, we're, we're putting some good words in there and we're, we're, we're allowing ourselves a little bit of flexibility. Oh, what about the, Billy, what about your idea of hitting everybody? Like right now, this is for six and above houses. We also want to have the people that are building any subdivision put something in. No, I think it'd be too cumbersome. We're not behind the eight ball. The remem remember, we kind of calculated you know, the, what was it, 10 and under, and how long it would take, blah, 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 in order to, uh, but if, if it's too small, we're almost discouraging any development. And do we want to do that? Because well, so, it'll be costly. It'll, it'll increase the cost of housing for the so average family. Barnstable had a and I just looked at it quickly too, but Barnstable had a phased one. If you're doing uh, up to six units, um, you know, up to six, I guess they called it units, whether it is a freestanding house or an apartment, but uh, up to six, you just had to pay, everybody paid 500 to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And then if it was seven or more, you actually had to, had to put one in. They didn't seem to have a payment in lieu clause or at least you can see it if they did yeah, uh, i would say keep it the way it is for now and we can always change it if if we need to have well i i well, you know maybe that, that might be a good idea let's get this correct and let this let's, let's get this going and then maybe we can revisit it after we get this in even if we don't have any subdivisions applied and then put something in to change it for the yeah. smaller ones yeah well what i think i think that i think that's a good idea um i actually have a meeting with 
um, someone from the Hadley community on Thursday um, regarding a forthcoming housing production plan. Um, so I think those are the types of discussions that a housing plan navigate, particularly if you want to address this fee that would be attached to any sort of subdivision type development on top of an inclusionary zoning bylaw, which you know is is evident in Barnstable, but um, I think with regards to your regulations, um, if we can clarify, you know, and and provide and maybe even clarify even that language even further with giving a, giving an example within the document itself, that could be helpful for for the board and for the public to understand. I think I'll you know I'll work with Bill on. Um, taking that assessor data with that number um, and then trying to figure out how that language for 2A works to, to clarify how we got to that number and then quantify what 2B is, which is that affordable um, unit. Uh, and then, you know, you'd find the difference, which would be the, the cost to the developer if they could not develop on site. Um, and it may have no relation to 60,000 at all. Right. I mean, and I guess if, if the board also wanted to ease that language with regards to the 60,000, I, you know, it's possible if you, if you wanted to make it, you know, less stringent, um, or it, it would be more, what's the word, um, you know, utilizing the example that Jim gave earlier, if there was another formula that worked, particularly that construction the one based on the cost of construction and the and the land, if that worked better and and an applicant could quantify, you know, a true cost of an affordable unit, then it's possible, you know, that the board would would allow for that. Um, so maybe coming up with another clause that suggests that if there happens to be another formula based on the language that we had used earlier um we could maybe add that here i don't know that might be too confusing well i think with the are we trying to is this is this uh do we have a placeholder for this as an article in two weeks or no we don't no. okay. okay these are we, we, these are planning board regulations that we're adopting to implement okay. what has already been approved. Okay. Yeah, this we, we would have to hold a public hearing for this and publish it in the Gazette, Mark. Okay. So this yeah, is you not- You will need approval of the planning board to, uh, to do it. So this is not technically a continuation of the public hearing on the adoption of regulations because Mike's not here. Um, but this is just a discussion, continuing discussion, and we have the actual public hearing continued to um, our next meeting. Okay. Which would be the 19th. Okay. And maybe we'll continue it again if we have a boisterous night. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll take the shovels away so we don't keep digging that hole deeper and deeper. No, I think this is getting closer to something. That I would, uh, I, I'm just interested to see what that formula works out to. I agree. And um, you know, that's the really the, you know all all of these x's and y's and uh, all these variables are uh, they're nice, but let's put some real numbers here. Yeah, I agree. Let's let's see what Mr. Zadonik has for data uh, and how that would play out. And that's kind of a a dry run to say, wow, okay, or yeah, let's rethink it. Yeah, we're not we're not trying to be punitive here. We're we're oh. just trying to carry out the the goal of the inclusionary zoning bylaw in a way that gives some flexibility to the developer um, and and yet respects the the goal. 
Thank you, Ken. Thank you. This is this is a this is a long and arduous one, if you would. But it, yeah, I mean, it, but this happens. I mean, housing is it, this is an important topic, and yeah. uh, oftentimes this is the one that takes a long time. But I think we're getting closer. Yeah. So I don't know what we want to suggest for a future meeting. Um, so potentially the 19th is either going to be a very busy night or a very quiet night. Well, Kevin is on, but I, I got to get a hold of Randy to find out if we're actually going to be in for that one. So because that's the continuation of Kevin Michelson's. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, the uh, November 2nd is the, uh, the transfer of development rights for ideal movers. Right. That should be fairly straightforward. Yeah. I have not heard back from uh, Ag Resources, so I probably have drifted down in his inbox uh, because I asked for something that he had to look up. So I'll uh, uh, You want to try November 2nd or 16th, Jim? Anyone better than you? Um. The, I mean, either or, I, I, uh, um, I mean, it, it, it maybe the second. Okay. All right. Anything else for Ken? Is that enough? That's enough. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Good time. I'm just going to stick around to hear what you okay. say. Okay. Okay. We will open our public hearing for the zone article. The planning board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, October 5th, 2021, beginning at 6.45. Purpose of the hearing is to review the following proposed amendment to the Hadley Zone Bylaw. Amend section 17.3.2 to read 17.3.2 receiving district. The district shall consist of all lots within the business and industrial zones with frontage on and a public way. The complete text of the zone bylaw and map are available upon request by detailing the Hadley planning, details for internet connections available when it's being published in the town uh, agenda by the town clerk, published twice in a gazette to uh, September 13 and 20. And there is one change to that amendment and that would be to remove the word and so that it will now read Amend section 17.3.2 to read 17.3.2 receiving district. This district shall consist of all lots within the business and industrial zones with frontage on a public way. Just a grammatical thing. Um, Just housekeeping. Mark, Mark caught that. I did get that change into the uh, town warrant. Okay. So that's it. Thank you, Kim. Thank me up. Thank you, Mark, for catching that. Kim, when you explained this to the the town meeting, uh, as you did in a previous meeting, explain that this zoning change came as a result of uh, a petition. So it was. That's why petitions are difficult sometimes to cope oh. with. Yeah, the so original one. It, it was not all our fault. Either, yeah. but uh, this, what was this, the petition to to in, in, enlarge the industrial district? 
Right. No, limit limit the size of the uh, of the size of the big box oh, development. Yeah. It was an anti big yeah. box development, and then they said to to preserve the agricultural land that the transfer of development rights was attached to it. Yeah, I, I don't think we have to get into that. I think we okay. just we're, we're just talking about an area areas. All right. Okay. In case somebody wants to know, oh, if, uh, they, if, if they ask questions, but I. I can uh -oh. explain if that if they ask any questions on it. So you know, it's, it's kind of an it's kind of an editorial comment uh, uh, from our point of view that petitions for zoning changes should be done in conjunction with the planning board to get the numbers correct to make sure that it qualifies, et cetera, et cetera. And then the other thing. That, time North Lane at uh, the uh, North Maple Street that th this was designed to, to capture the industrial park on North Maple Street but now it has a subdivision road through it and not all of the lots even have frontage on North Maple Street they have right. frontage on um, what is the entryway, uh, entryway. <clears throat> yeah right. so it's not so much a substantial change as a grammatical correction to to take loopholes out of the net yeah, it, 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 it's that basically have. make sure we include all the business and industrial only the not the business not the, the local and limited are not included it's just a regular business and a regular industrial land in right. the town right so yeah it doesn't look like we have a lot of dissenters attending tonight's meeting. I'll wait till Joe gets back. I can wait for a glass of water. Yeah. There's Mr. Zagradnik, a tall glass of water. He's a tall drink of water. <laughs> That's what I had to get. I will make a motion to recommend approval. I would second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0 with one absent. Um, I have nothing else. I am checking my notes and I don't have anything else either. I would say maybe just uh, um, just wanted to clarify one thing that came out at the, I guess it was the uh, CPA meeting, um, the um, um, and uh, Mark, you said something regarding the agenda. Um, yeah, I have that affordable housing trust fund updates on our planning board agenda as sort of a uh, placeholder and just allowing us to discuss issues that may come up, but that is not intended to be a separate notice of a meeting of the affordable housing trust fund. So we would still we could not use that to take action on behalf of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, even though we are a majority of its members. So, so if we wanted to do that, we'd have to do the 48 hours notice or we have, have to, to post a post a uh, an agenda for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund yeah, with the 48 and, hours. Uh, yeah, meeting notice and an agenda and, that, and make sure that the chairman knows it. Okay. Yep. Um, the select board got got a little pushback because they just had discuss uh, or update COVID, and they used that to uh, change a policy, and uh, the attorney general did not find that acceptable notice. So, uh, yeah, I'm just just trying to have the. Uh, keep it there as a, a placeholder that we can discuss issues, but we cannot uh, uh, actually take votes 
on those. Likewise, procedures uh, and future discussion topics, that those are too broad to base any action on. Okay. Mr. Quinlan, welcome. How's everybody doing? Good. We're almost done. Have you got anything, Tom? Nope. I was. Uh, I actually do. Okay. Okay, Bill. I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna send it over to you right now. Um, I met with uh, one of the new girls over at the um, uh, Mountain Farms Mall. She had a couple questions about um, the signage and things. So let me send this to. Bill? Was that for Planet Fitness? No. Um, EMS must be going to be leaving. And there's they signage. Uh, they, they might be. So what I'm sending you is, first of all, what they want to know is, say, down the road, because too many, um, I know there's a couple other stores that will possibly be opening. And I know like Old Navy, their signs are bigger, things like that. So if at some point you guys can put together something about how their signage should go. So every time a new store comes in, they wanna know if like say if Old Navy got replaced, would they be able to put the same size of sign that Old Navy has now? Yes. Okay. So these are things that they wanted to know. And then let's see here, why is this not? In, in, in Old Navy, I believe received a zoning variance. Okay. And that zoning variance continues with the site as opposed to being unique to Old Navy. There was actually a case law on that from Hadley where basically Mr. Weinzik was, was of you know, the uh, River Drive excavating was granted yep. a variance for something and the zoning board worded it in such a way that it was unique to one person. And it went to court, this goes back years. And it was <clears throat> appealed that it was not unique to Mr. Weinzik. The zoning board said it was, and it was turned up to be not unique to Mr. Weinzik, that it carried with that I don't want to say property as much as that application, whatever that might have been. Because I don't remember the exact. I don't remember the exact terms of that. Remember that one, Bill? I do. Um, okay, I'm going to forward this around to everyone. That yeah, but the old the old navy. I don't think they got a variance. Remember, there was a huge discussion. They had a sign that looked like the one in uh, Chicago on on their that uh, boardwalk that Chicago has, it, it was like 200 square feet and they claimed they weren't gonna come into town if they couldn't get that sign and we made them made it, make it smaller and conform. There was a lot of controversy over that sign and it was gonna be way above the roof line. And I think that's the thing, they're a little confused because of previous signs and any new signs coming in, what their whole, you know, are they supposed to say the 40 square feet and under for every sign, any new signs coming in, you know, that's where they keep getting questioned on by people that want to move in. Well, the, 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 question, the question was that this was a real problem and they all went to the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Zoning Board of Appeals was granting a lot of them. So each one is distinctly different. And then okay. all of a sudden the planning board uh, under the direction of some attorney uh, on the board told us that, uh, told the people from now on, they do not have a legitimate cause for variance. And if they go before the Zoning Board of Appeals, the planning board will talk against it. So- Right, just like mattresses. They are no longer granting those at will. So there are a few, I, I, I understand your conflict and yes. that's- but and it, it, It's also hard to tell people that, uh, yeah, that, that was granted under different rules. Uh, right. I'm sorry, but the, the, 
that big sign is why you can't have a big sign because town meeting voted to change the rules uh, mm -hmm. a reaction to over signage. Yep. Um, so that might make the grandfathered oversize sign parcels more desirable and more expensive. Because they exactly. Kind of inherit, right. inherit yep. the retail benefits of that. Right. So basically, there's nothing. I, first, I, well, I heard about it, but there's nothing you're going to come up. They're basically going to have to do it on a case by case, and it's going to have to, you know, come in for, before you. And I'll try to give you every heads up I can, you know, when they ask me on each individual one. Yeah. And that's kind of what I told her, though, because no matter what, they have to go in front of you guys to get their signs approved. Yeah. So yeah. either way. Yeah. Now, if they received a zoning variance, it should be recorded a registry of deed. Is that correct, Bill? That is correct. So if it's even if they if some companies, some places, people, whatever you want to call them, don't record their variances for whatever reason. And if it's not recorded, it's long since expired in that case, I believe. Okay. So okay. you know, I I don't know if they've all recorded them or not. I couldn't say. Right. And to make it a little more interesting, uh a few years ago, the Registry of Deeds changed their recording standards, their indexing standards. So uh, you can't look for Hadley ZBA um, and get a consistent answer. Uh, so it's sort of time to put the burden back onto the applicant to say, mm -hmm. well, I was told we had a variance. Well, fine, show it to us. Yes, show us the deed. It should be on the deed someplace. Well, okay. but, but Tom, not to be a wise guy, but I, I usually give a little speech and I think it started with Bill. Uh, uh, Almy's, Zares, Wilco, Steigers, et cetera, et cetera, all had huge, huge signs. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They're not here anymore. So if you have a good business, people will find you without the size right. of the sign. And the other right. one that said, well, corporate demands that kind of sign. Well, Hadley doesn't allow what corporate always says. So, uh, the other, the other, and the thing that I've caught it because I used to, I do block letter signs on a side. I've done it for years. And one of the things that I learned that over the years is they say, well, corporate, this, this has to do this. And I have seen lots of corporate standards, including for the companies that I worked had worked for. Virtually every sign standard I've ever seen doesn't dictate a size. They dictate a ratio. Okay. So that if this letter is two feet high, this one next to it must be, let's say they got a symbol. Well, the symbol is X big the wording next to it needs to be a ratio to the symbol, either bigger or smaller by some percentage, but they don't dictate 10 square feet versus 100 square feet versus et cetera. And I, I was surprised to read that. And they said, and I says, when I asked that a couple of different times, this is beside the point, I says, why is that? And he says, well, sometimes we can get a sign that's as big as the world on a building. Other times, if we want to put it on a business card, you can't dictate that the sign's got to be a certain size. It has to all be ratioed so yep. that it looks, no matter where it is, it's consistent. And that's their trademark. Okay. Yeah, we were up in Maine at my cousin's this weekend. We went by a McDonald's. I want to see it was East, East Bath. I've never seen the symbol of the McDonald's so small. You know, the, the actual yep. main sign out there. Yep. And that's all I could think of was they must, their bylaw, that's it. That's all they can have. Well, are you, if you ever go through Sedona, Arizona, yes, you drive through the, the main uh, road of Sedona, you don't even see the shopping centers. All you see is massive trees, beautiful yep. landscaping, and little signs. And I do mean little signs for the whole mall. And once you drive into the mall, it's different. But from the road, you see virtually nothing. It's absolutely, I mean, this is a newer development. The older developments are a little bit different. But I remember going through there, I don't know, however, the last time, maybe five years ago, we went to see the Grand Canyon. We were in Sedona. And I, my wife says, boy, 
whoever the zoning board is, whoever the planning board is here, the really good the zoning bylaws. <laughs> she's always busting me on that stuff. Yep. And it's right. It, it, it's really, really pretty. Yep. That's my favorite spot. I love Sedona. Oh, yep. Jim, Jim uh, when Lisa was on the board, she was, uh, Jim used to send pictures of his travels. One was Sedona and the other was when his daughter was at UVA, he was sending pictures of McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts and places like that. So uh, they're not well, I always did. as gawky <laughs> as sometimes. Well, just, the, just, yeah, Tom, well, I'll send you an email on this, but just to let you know, we approve the Planus Fitness um, facade entrance. Okay. We're going to make the colors, say, call the color March Wind and Peppercorn. <laughs> and the <laughs> one in, uh, directional sign that's on South Maple Street by the bike path, they're allowed to keep that per size, but the one that's on Route 9 has got to go. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I have to let you know, I got an email a little while ago from a business owner that goes into work early and uh, actually sent the email to thank me for picking up all the pancake signs or the, you know, all the signs out there. So that people notice, it does go notice yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, they got noticed for what I was doing. Sometimes, so. sometimes when I'm driving around, I'm picking up all of these, you know, because I, I think when, when Tim was in, it was a building inspector, yeah, I says, who can take down these little, uh, you know, eight by 12 signs or whatever they are advertising, you know, um, we buy houses instead of stuff like that. He says, anybody. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. He says, we take them down all the time. He says, if somebody keeps, we put them in a town garage. He says, if somebody complains with someone, you, they're illegal. You can come and get them if you want. He says, nobody has ever come and got, taken them, taken them back. Yep. East Hampton is clearly written in the bylaw that it's the building commissioner or zoning enforcement officer that grabs them. So Joe Fight and Kevitz every couple of weeks, hey, you better get on those signs again. But it clear, their bylaw clearly says that it would be the zoning enforcement officer that can take them, which really covers you. Okay, um, maybe, we should, maybe, we, maybe we should put something like that in. It, it, it was very helpful because then there was, you, and you left them by the uh, same thing, DPW shed. Yeah. I think there might be a law, 30 days or something, they sit there before they get thrown out, but you can always go pick them up there if somebody complains. That's in East Hampton, huh? I'll have yes. to take a look at that. It's a very, yeah. Um, he's the commissioner that was on the bylaw committee in Southampton, and uh, I'm sorry, South Hadley now. And Joe said he worked on that, you know, that was his thing um, years ago on that. Yeah, that's Tommy's thing too with those <laughs> signs. Except he, we've been trying to keep up for a little bit. Like certain businesses, if they have hiring, because they're really trying to hire people. So if they have too many, he's been taking them. But we've been leaving at least one. So because yeah. you know we do want to help out those businesses. Well, yeah, I mean somebody's looking to hire. I don't want to take their hiring no. right. down because everybody's sucking pond water big time. Exactly. Right yeah. Oh, holy smokes. But, but they get carried away, it's different. Right. There was a dozen on the corner for five guys. So I took them. I went, I saw them that night going through to inspection. So I went at 536, whatever. It's easier to get them then in the morning and, and you know, took them all. That was out of control all around the yeah. building. But now are any of the um signs in the Mount Farm Small internally lit? Some are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, all right. Prohibition that... on internal illumination was about uh, what about eight years ago, eight ten years ago now. Okay, and that's that was... when I told her that's why the other ones can't have them now. Yeah, right. And, and we're, we're, as they come in, we're trying to ne negotiate with a lot of these people, companies about getting rid of them in some way. Right. Yeah. So now the thing that I sent over to uh, Bill, um, I guess. I'm, not, I'm, I'm assuming the way she was talking, EMS is either probably moving. I know the AT&T building that had the eyeglass place, I think they're looking into making that one store and they're gonna move AT&T into one of the smaller spots. So I don't know if maybe EMS is gonna move into there or what their actual plan is or where people's bank. Um, but the problem with EMS is they said that because they're so far set back, they feel that nobody knows that they're there and they feel that they're going to have a hard time leasing that spot out. So what I, what they were looking to do, and that's why I said, well, let me just get this by you guys is um, 
still have the signs on the building, but they wanted to do that kind of arch thing with another, you know, with the name on that sign, all on that arch also. Okay, hang on a second. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna share my screen now. How did, how did it go with the um, street change? The name of the street? Uh, Nicole did not come in. Oh, okay, all right. I did uh, speak to uh, Mike Mason this afternoon. He thought it was just fine. So he's just waiting to hear from us that it's a go. Okay, good. Okay, so this is what uh, was sent around. Yes, so they thought that if they just put that one arch there with whatever stores in there, it might kind of look foolish. So then they were showing it different ways. And if they made it just so it looked more uniform and then people could see those two businesses more. But I guess the where EMS is, that's really where people can't tell that they're there because they're set back. So they wanted to know if this was a possibility. Um, they're not looking for an answer right now, but they wanted me to bring that in, uh, in front of you guys. Do they want to put this where they're showing the EMS above the stuff or just in line with the Panera and the other one? Famous in line there. with the paper store? Yeah, so they, as you see, kind of yeah. does look foolish if they just did, if they do do it, if they just put the one. So they're saying that they still want to have the sign on the building and I'm assuming this, I really, that's the only part I can't really tell is on the, um, on that arch, how exactly the sign is going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be some way lit so people can still see it. So that's the only thing. I don't know if that's too much signage or, but it's they're trying to bring those two stores out. It's not going to be lit. I'll tell you that. Yeah. It sounds like it's uh, going to be a little bit more than would be allowed, but once again, that would be one to come before us and uh, show us exactly what they want. Yeah. And that's when I told her, I said, I'd present it to you guys just so to give you guys the heads up. Okay. It's kind of what they're looking for. Um, like I said, it kind of does look foolish if they just did one. It, looked, it does look better if they did two, but then I don't know, like if they have the two signs in front of, you know, one in the back, one in the front, that might look kind of foolish too. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that, 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 to, to Joel's point, that's why let, let's let them come in and with a much better description of what they want to do. Okay, and if, all right. Yeah, if they want to move their signage to that kind of bridge or what, what have you, uh, that's one thing. If they want to have as much signage there at, and still keep as much on the building, that's another thing. Right, right. right. That's going to set a bad precedent. And that's kind of what I uh, I told her. And they're, you know, they're fine with whatever decision you guys make, but they're afraid that it's going to, they're going to have a hard time when it comes time to leasing that, uh, especially EMS out, that um, people are going to feel that they're not going to be seen. So, uh, you know, I'll get back to her on that. Now, the other question, and she was not sure of this, um, of course, with Route 9 widening, they will be taking some of that frontage there. Now, Mass DOT did not say anything about the pylon signs, but that is like a concern because, you know, I don't know, they didn't know, are they going to have to move them because they're going to be closer to the road? So I told them I'd, you know, ask some of those questions because that was one of their concerns. Well, how much are they, how much uh, are they taking? Yeah. That I'm not sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I have to relook at the thing again. It, it did look like they were taking a, a, a good chunk, but what is the, what is the setbacks on that? Is it? 20 feet from the road. 20 be 20 there, right? Yeah. So we've been telling other people who have asked that uh, we're, we're not going to require them to move their signs just because mm -hmm. the, town, the state's taking the road. But okay. if it 
creates a, a sight line issue, that's another story. Right. Okay. Yeah, big pylons probably won't. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was their concern because they have two pylons and they're like, it, you know, it is an expense. Granted, because the state wouldn't, they're not requiring them to move it. So the state's not going to help pay it like they are some of the other signs that they have to move. So they just wanted to kind of have an idea because it's going to be quite expensive if they'd have to move those. But if it ended up a site, wouldn't they be able to go after the state to help with that? Well, in theory, the state should be reimbursing them for that cost. Right. In right. theory. But that means obviously a very wide interpretation. You know. Yeah, because I know the, the state asked, they 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 came in, I want to say over a year and a half ago, and asked us like a blanket question. If we do this, do the landowners have to do this? And we told them there's no blanket answer for that. Everything's going to be on a case by case basis because it's so varied along the length of that road. Some will, some won't, some will be okay. Some are going to be in tough condition, you know, because they were looking for an easy out as far as paying different old landowners. And there is no easy out on a lot of this stuff. Right, right. Because I know some people have already gotten paid. Uh, or they're going to be getting paid to move their signs already because they're going to be in the way. Um, are you guys going to end up having like a, a certain, just like one meeting kind of thing where the business owners, if they have to move their signs, or are you going to do them on an individual? Right now, it's going to be have to be on an individual basis. It's not like it's it's so varied. Yeah. You know, it's like okay, their front yard setback. Some people may be fifty feet. Well, if they take 15, they're going to be 35 feet. It's like saying, well, you're going to move your house back 35 feet. You know, you know no, that's right. not going to be the case. It's right. going to be, you know, um, how close are you? You know, and, and then we, we, we're we not going to put them out. But but the plan said there was only exotic auto was, was the one losing their business. <coughs> right. That building across the street where their back of the barn is already in the Route 9 right of way when they're done their porch is going to be something like a foot and a half from the right of way. Right. We and that house that. can stay. That's not our concern. That's right. the state and the landowner, however they decide to accomplish that. Yep. You know, and, but those are the two worst cases. Okay. Yeah, because I know the one that's next door to uh, Hadleaf, where Hadleaf is going, the palm reader, um, she already it was told that she's going to have to move her sign. Okay. So, uh, of course, her house is pretty close there too. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I, I told them uh, no matter what, they're still probably going to have to go through you guys anyways. So, yeah, we're, we're we'll certainly depending on the volume, uh, if we can encourage everybody to come in one night and just talk about signs and that'd be fine but we only had an occasional question there was one uh in fact, i think it was one of the parmars that wanted to uh actually get their sign relocation settled a year and a half ago for the um the new hotel they were going to be building but you know everything's sort of on hold now um yeah. and um others yeah, you know, we haven't had a lot of a uh, lot of questions, but I think in general, no, we're not going to require it to be moved just because it is now closer. But uh, we need to take everyone needs to take a look at how uh, how it affects sight lines. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, and I I told them I go believe me we don't want to put anybody out of business or anything like that, and we're going to work with everybody. It's just that every situation is going to be different. Yeah, you know, we're, we're going to be accommodating as we reasonably can, but you know the biggest thing is safety. If it's right. if it's still safe when it's all said and done, that's probably going to be good. Yeah, if you've got an elevated, you know, pylon sign that has open space beneath it right. that will maintain visibility, then that's probably going to be okay. But we'll have to it, again; it'll be case by case. Yeah, we're going to be busy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. In the name of progress.
Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So I'll, I'll let them know that, you know, about that arch thing that if they're really looking into it to go, okay. go in front of you guys. Okay. So that's it, I think. Thank you. Sorry we're late. I had a training all day and yesterday I had to leave halfway through because of a little incident in town. So <laughs> what are you training on? It's my continuing ed. It's it's uh the, oh, for the yeah, year one at one at UMass. So but today we had a networking after work, so I mean after the training. So oh. does your system building effect they have to go to? I got to go yeah, later so on. You got yes. to go later on. So they all got an earful at our table, so. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks yep. a lot. Thank you. Um, anybody have anything else? I have nothing Go else. Red Sox. Very good. <laughs> Motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved. Motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Yep. Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Thank you, thank you. Oh, there you are. And thank you, Kim.